Okay, hearing that, that will conclude item number four on our agenda, which brings us to item five, which is um, pending allegations in recent lawsuit, which may be in the plural lawsuits to which I would like to speak. Um, I heard our public commenters today and I heard them at our special meeting last week and others. And I have read the many emails that I and my colleagues received concerning the conduct of the November 3rd elections. And I want to assure anyone listening that those have been either read or heard with concern. Um, and we heard concerns about illegalities, lax procedures, insecurity of ballots, things, specific things like suitcases of ballots under tables, water, the infamous water leak, counters without counting going on without par party monitors being present. And I have also reviewed to the extent that I have been able lawsuits that have been filed primarily against the Secretary of State's office, but also including Fulton County and other local elections boards. And I've consulted with my colleagues. These are all serious matters and we take them seriously. And the next question is what can and should this board do um, to determine what we could or should do? I determined whether these matters are being investigated and whether this board can or should conduct its own investigations and whether we can do so well. I also consulted with our lawyers as well as the investigators for the Secretary of State's office. Um, the Secretary of, well, it is really the State Elections Board which can direct investigations and which has the power to subpoena witnesses, to fine us, to compel testimony under oath, none of which this board can do. I spoke to the Secretary of State's chief investigator about specific and general inquiries like those illegalities, insecurities, um, lax procedures. There are apparently in excess of 250 um, open cases, um, but the I am assured by the Secretary of State's office that the Georgia Bureau of Investigation has made available resources to assist in running those down. Those 250 do not by any means all apply to Fulton County, more like 10% of that, but nonetheless, they are following up on those and the things that I specifically asked about are still under investigation, are ongoing and being run down, uh, which is to say um, interviewed, evidence reviewed. And I talked with our lawyers who have witnessed um, uh, part of that investigation and who assure me that it is being done by teams of investigators. I am satisfied that the questions that are being raised for the most immediate purposes are being conducted by the entity which has the authority and obligation to do so, which is the Secretary of State's office and its office of investigation. And that if it is to be done well, we should leave it to those trained investigators. That doesn't mean that we are not concerned with the things that are under our control, which may be lax procedures, insecurities, processes that need to be um, uh, amended so that they are not lax. And we will deal with those. I am, I am given the impression that these investigations are not going to be going on for months, that they are going to be concluded fairly promptly, but I'm not going to put any uh, indirect pressure on somebody else's office to complete anything. I just have that impression. In addition, I talked with our lawyers and I think I made available to other board members at least one lawsuit uh, of which I was made aware um, that alleges illegal votes in Fulton County and other counties. 
those are going to be addressed and responded to by our lawyers. And I do not want to get in their way when they, um, they do that response. This, the investigator to whom, the chief investigator of the Secretary of State to whom I spoke has an answer here to, and particularly I'm looking at a comment or a question about sending photo evidence of unsecured ballot transport bags. There is a link on the website for submitting uh, complaints or evidence uh, at the Secretary of State's office, and that should be used so that they have everything in front of them that they need. Having done all of that, I am going to um, suggest that this board should wait for the factual conclusions that I think are going to be uh, determined and work from there to do better what has been done in the past. And that at least for this month, and while those investigators are questioning various people and reviewing specific evidence, including videos, which, which was discussed with me, that we should leave it to those investigators at this time. Um, and that is what I have to report of my review of what is going on and my commitment that uh, we will take the actions that we need to take when it is appropriate for us to do so. And I am determined that we will, we will do so. Um, Mr. Wingate. Yeah, Madam Chair, just for clarification by what you just stated, um, your comment was, and correct me if I'm, I'm, if I'm incorrect, but was that it, it, it makes sense obviously on these particular allegations that uh, they are looked at and responded to. You commented that we'll wait until the factual results are transmitted back. I'm not sure I follow what that means because I don't believe it's fair. Uh, if I allegate something against you and your response back to me is coined your factual response well i help me I, maybe i'm misunderstanding madam chair what you're saying but i just uh, that terminology to me doesn't make any sense okay i think i think and let me let me say this and then you can disagree with me clearly but I believe what you're indicating is, is that our attorneys, probably Director Barron, others are reviewing these sworn affidavits, allegations, whichever you wish to call them. And that body will provide then a response to those allegations. Is that, is that a fair way to look at it in, in terms of my small mind? <laughs> well, I disagree about uh, about the breadth of your of your mind, but um, in terms of what I meant by factual allegations, it is my understanding that as to a particular thing, and I'm sorry to bring it up because everybody brings it up, and that is the so-called suitcases of uh, ballots under a table, is a factual allegation. And it is my understanding that the investigators who are both GBI in that instance, as well as Secretary of State, are or have uh, interviewed several witnesses about what went on and they have also reviewed video and they are going to make a conclusion about that. Okay. I don't think that we can uh, are equipped to make any contrary conclusion if trained investigators have spoken to three, five, seven witnesses plus reviewed two or three videos and, and that I is think, what i mean by that yeah, madam chair i think i think i understand that that is a different context than our county attorneys and our uh, department executives responding that way I, I would maybe the other board members will disagree i clearly want to be able to feel acceptance of what professional investigators come up with 
I think we have to, you know, it's, please jump in and correct me, but I, I, I firmly believe that that is exactly the agencies that we need to, you know, draw their conclusions and report, you know, what their findings are. Um, in further response to you and going back with apologies to the suitcases of ballots, if those investigators found that containers of ballots were mishandled, then I think it is absolutely incumbent on this board to make sure that never happens again and to reach our own conclusion. But I am not going to say that those, I, I am not going to reach a contrary conclusion to trained investigators who have spoken right. with, I assume a number of witnesses and, um, okay. I, I think that's what I'm saying. That question. That's right. Think, Ms. Yes. Thank you. And thank you, Ms. Neuridin. Oh, thank you so much. And thank you again, Mark, for bringing that up. I think that was a great point. I do appreciate Madam Chair um, monologue. And I agree with her in that we have to wait to the conclusion of these investigations. I, having said that, though, I don't believe that uh, uh, the I, well, I do believe that the, the public deserves an answer and response. And one thing that I know for certain is that the truth doesn't change. So the truth doesn't change with who's watching the video or who's injecting a narrative that's not there. So, you know, I think that we do the public a disservice by not at least addressing what I think from my understanding. And, and I will say uh, to the public that the response that you, the, the monologue to this agenda item that you just heard from Madam Chair is similar to the responses that I, at least I got as a board member when trying to find information about exactly what happened because we received so much information from so many different places. And, uh, you know, all, most of it is, or all of it I would think is untrue, but not having that requisite knowledge to confidently say that is very difficult as a board member. And I believe when I spoke to um, Director Barron this morning that the account given was is truthful and believable and that giving the public anything other than the truth just seems suspicious. It seems as if the um, GBI will tell us what the truth is and that we have to wait on the GBI to learn the truth as far as, far as what happened. I, I believe that the truth will exonerate our, um, our, our staff and the DRE, but you know, I, I will agree and have accepted that this will not be communicated publicly and that you will receive, hopefully as this board will, a report from whatever entities is investigating it. But I, I did wanna say that I do believe that, that the, the public deserves some explanation from the DRE. And that doesn't mean that this board needs subpoena power or that we're trying to draw conclusions. We only have one employee and that's Director Barron and, uh, and it's his staff to manage. And um, I just wanted, wanted to say that we can do better than you know, just saying, wait to a report. Who knows if it's going to come out? And it can, and the report could just say all the allegations were unfounded, which will still lead the public to doubt this process and to breed just distrust with it. So that's my two cents. Thank you, Ms. Neuridin. Uh Dr. Ruth, did I? Uh, uh, I, I do agree with some aspects of um, Bernetta's, Ms. Neuridin's comments, and I think we should provide, once we receive that information from the GBI, provide a summary of the findings to the public so that they are aware of those findings. Um, I, I think that's really important in, in building transparency and trying to rebuild the trust of voters. Uh, thank you. And let me assure you that when I obtain, if they uh, uh, grace me with copies, but I have a feeling that they will because as you know, the state elections board usually um, lets us know what we've done wrong. 
and calls us to account. But and as soon as I, I know in whatever way, I, that will be shared immediately with the board and we'll determine how to, to deal with that. Let me make sure Mr. Johnson is taken care of if you need that. Um, I just want to say I agree that we should. I think it's a good exercise. Not I'm, I won't use the word exercise. I think it's great that the GBI is investigating because one of the things that I think that we would get is we're already being accused of hiding things from at the board level. We're being accused of allowing certain things to happen. You know, you've all gotten the emails that we've committed treason, this, that, and the other, just a nonstop barrage. Uh, having the GBI, uh, I think, is a very good uh, step in having a third party, non partial organization look at the allegations that were made. Now, I will agree with the chair in that allegations are not always uh, factual. Uh, we get allegations all the time. I saw an interview yesterday with the governor where he was accused of colluding with China to make the election results in Georgia. And I think that's unfair that, um, you know, we have to separate allegations from anything else. So with these allegations, having the Secretary of State's office, who we know uh, try to hold our feet to the fire for everything we do, if they come to a conclusion, the GBI looks at the same information. They have investigators that actually do a full-fledged investigation. Uh, we look at their conclusion. And then at some point, we have to say we concur with the uh, findings. Uh, I don't know what else we can do, because usually when there's a major issue, we end up going to the GBI to investigate. Uh, some people will believe them some people won't I know that but as this board we do have to it's good for us to have that third party going in investigating these allegations that are being made then we can then stand on something that we didn't do a third party did and found the information so having a report for the public a response to the public I absolutely agree uh, we definitely need to do that but I do believe that we should wait for the findings. Thank you, Mr. Johnson. Mr. Wingate? Yeah, uh, let me make a comment too about these this ongoing investigation that we're speaking of. And Madam Chair, your comment to the, um, or may, I'm sorry, maybe it was uh, Dr. Ruth commented about the uh, releasing or having some synopsis of that finding. I think we all, know and need to be aware and, and stay in front of because you can be assured that the media is going to be probably standing outside, probably inside the office right now, waiting for whatever this is to conclude. So I, I'm, I, I, who knows what that is, but just be aware that, uh, yeah, this will be a media event and us coming back in behind that at some point in time, I just want those that have that kind of uh, training and capability just to, to be mindful and thinking about um, uh, how that is to be handled. Thank you, Mr. Wingate. Any further comments or discussion? And hearing none, let me thank you. Let me repeat that as soon, soon as I receive any conclusions or anything, any communications, about the allegations being um, investigated. I will share those immediately with the board and look to the board uh, to help us get that out to the public and then to do what we can do, which is to make sure that it does better and things wrong don't happen again. All right, uh, Mr. Wendy. Real quickly on uh, by, by your comment there, uh, what is your plan then for uh, communicating that to the board? And will we have to have a spatial uh, meeting or session to discuss that? How do you how do you envision that proceeding? Let's see. In my fantasy world, I envision getting a call that says, "You you did such a wonderful job. We have nothing to say," and getting that by a, a telephone call. I doubt very much that that's going to happen. What I suspect 
is that this will resolve itself into 10, 15, whatever, um, allegations of failing to comply or carry out state law, which is the way the, the state elections board usually does and the state and um, uh, a prosecution, which will not be a criminal prosecution, but uh, we will be called to account as we have in the past for any failures during, during, the, um, uh, during the election and that we will respond to those and those will be in writing. That's, that's what I think is more realistic. All right, do, do uh, one last thing, and I, I apologize for taking up too much time here, but uh, is it uh, 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 envisioned that these, uh, these allegations and this activity through investigation will have any impact on the SEB consent order? Not, oh, um, the SEB consent order, which is now, I will say, in abeyance for the June okay. 10th election. Is that what you're referring to? Yeah. All right, let me um, remind everybody that we entered into uh, a consent order for allegations made concerning alleged failures for, uh, that occurred during the June 10th election and the state elections board imposed uh, a fine of approximately fifty thousand dollars with um a promise that if our procedures improved such that the state elections board was satisfied with them that that fine would be waived so we have a consent order that election is over but in a sense, the, um, the election is not over because it will go before the state elections board again to see whether or not that fine will ultimately be imposed. What I would expect for the November 3rd election, I would be rather surprised if in fact I get a call saying you did everything perfectly. I would expect to get several allegations to which we would have to respond in approximately the same way and either agree with or disagree with those allegations. All right, now.